So like Sandy said, I'm interested in some of the new technologies of today. Technologies like machine learning, computer vision, and natural language processing represent new frontiers for innovation and entrepreneurialism. However, as we consider how these technologies will create opportunity, we should also ask ourselves, opportunities for whom? Since AI technologies stand to exacerbate income inequality, we should be trying to create wealth and employment opportunities for all without inhibiting innovation. In service to this goal, I've been trying to think, can we create a map that will empower workers to identify the skills that will uh, enable them to participate in the future of work? Answering this question is made difficult by the complex ways that technology can shape labor and by the course tools that we've already used to try to study this problem. So let me try to show you what I mean with an example. So in this video, we can see this awesome robot from Boston Dynamics. And you can see that it's balancing on two wheels and maneuvering in this warehouse environment while carrying a 30-pound box, which it can stack and de-stack in a really complicated way. So now let's ask ourselves if this technology matures and becomes practical, and we start seeing its use in warehouses, what will this mean for employment of warehouse workers? Now, I don't usually recommend turning to YouTube comments for economic forecasts, but I've provided some of them for you here, and you can see they're pretty pessimistic. So why do these people feel that way? Well, it turns out that this sentiment is actually embodied in the literature around the future of work in this idea called skill bias technological change, which says, in general, highly skilled cognitive workers stand to be augmented by technology, while low-skill physical workers will be substituted by technology. But I worry that we might miss some important details when we rely on these coarse labor categories. So let me give you an example to highlight what I mean. So this is just an exemplary cartoon. Here we see an artisanal good produced by a highly skilled worker. Here we see two unskilled workers. But with some technology, we can use these low-skilled dancers to produce this artisanal good. So now, similar to before, <laughs> yeah, these poor guys. Um, but similar to before, let's ask ourselves, what will this mean for employment for these two types of workers? And I suspect that this, if, if assuming that the video becomes a bit better over time, that we could produce this artisanal good using this cheap, low-skilled labor, and that would improve employment opportunities for those workers while depressing employment opportunities for the more expensive ballerina. So this is in contrast to what we observed for the factory robot. So this encourages me to consider the complexity of labor and to look at labor markets in different cities and to try to connect these labor markets to employment within cities and to the skills and interdependencies between skills that enable workers to move about their career. Now, when we do this, we can better see how technology uh, is able to perform different workplace activities and how these microscopic perturbations to the status quo can accumulate and diffuse throughout the whole labor system to produce the macroscopic trends that we talk about today. So I want to show you some examples from my research here at the Media Lab where we've used some of these ideas. First, we've been able to work with skills data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics to produce this map of workplace skills in the US. And when we do this, we find evidence for skill polarization. So we can use this tool to gain some insights about macroscopic labor trends and technological change. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, here in this study, we combined different sets of occupation level estimates for the risk of automation of different job titles. And we combine those estimates with employment distributions in different US cities. And when we do this, we can produce this on average uh, impact from automation for each US city. It turns out that regardless of the set of job predictions that we plug into the analysis, we find the same pervasive trend. Small cities face greater impact from automation in the foreseeable future. But of course, now the question is, what factors help to explain this differential impact? We can look at the skills that are supported in different cities and use the skill network as a tool to compare the workforces in different cities and better understand which cities are more resilient to technological change and why. We can also use this tool, of course, to understand occupations and individual workers who are uh, in, in competition with technology and who may be able to adapt with changing technology. I think we can use this level of insight to create a new framework that will give us better forecasts for the future of work and provide new tools to policymakers and workers who are trying to navigate their careers. 
I also think that this will open up possibilities to consider new sources of input data for real-time trends in people's skills and the way adver uh, people advertise skill requirements for employment opportunities, as well as considering some new estimates for which technologies are maturing in the foreseeable future. I think that this type of insight has a lot of use cases, including understanding economic resilience in cities, helping firms prepare for investment in IT, and helping workers prepare for the future of work. Thanks. Thank you.